Hi, this is Ant Miner Repair, and this is part three of a series on how to replace an Ant Miner chip, a BM1397 uh, ASIC chip. Um, so if, if you're interested in this topic and other topics like this, please subscribe to my channel, hit the subscribe button. Or if you just want to be notified when I do other videos on Ant Miner Repair, hit the little bell there and I think it'll notify you that, that hey, I've posted something new. So I have, a, I have a ton of boards to fix and I'm just kind of going through them. This, this video um, is the third part in a series. The first part um, we actually spent on removing the chip and, and working on this area, cleaning off the solder and rebuilding the legs on this to get ready for soldering. So we did that in the first video. In the second video, we took a, a new 1397 chip and we um, got the legs on it ready to solder. And that's this chip right here that needs a home. And then in this video, we're actually gonna put the chip on and try to solder it. Now I've never done it under the microscope. I usually can use the hot air gun at all different angles and have lots of room. And I don't have a lot of room this time, but it should work. So I'm gonna try it. And I guess if I have to pull it off and do it again, I can. It just takes an hour and a half to prepare everything again like we did. So um, the first step I always do is, is I know I'm gonna blow a lot of hair, hot air on this board. Um, so I'm gonna flux the resistors and capacitors around there so I don't blow it off because things are gonna get warm. And hopefully some of this flux will help the solder, solder um, stay on. That's my hope anyway. Um, so let me see, I think that's everybody kind of around the board. Now to get the board ready, I'm gonna solder, basically I'm gonna put a good coat of soldering on the legs, both legs. And then I'm gonna put solder where the chip goes. I try not to put too much, I'd rather float it on the legs, but um, it starts to boil and throws the chip off and separates the solder, I probably have too much. Um, if that happens, um, I'll just kind of keep working with it. All right, here comes the tricky part. Um, in all the videos I've watched for like QFN, um, they say, ah, oh, just get it near where the legs are. Um, so I'm gonna do that, but I'm, I actually like being a little more precise even though it's gonna move. I may have to reposition it right even in the middle. So this, this um, if you can see it barely, no, you can't see it. I've got the chip oriented in the right way. I'm gonna place it on top of the socket, pat it down just a touch. Um, now the trick is, is getting it in the right place and over the right leg. So, so the, the chip's legs stick out and the board legs stick out. So sometimes it doesn't want to sit. So I just use my, my, my tweezers to push it around. Um, let me get them down here. We need to move it up. See that white line? What I found is usually it follows the white lines pretty good. It looks like up above we're pretty good. So um, I start with this. Let me maybe go in a little more. So it looks like we have um, pretty equal pins on either side. I see the pins over here and I see probably more pins over here. It could be that the flux is uh, amplifying them though. I'm not quite sure. So I'm kind of bullseyeing it. And then if you look at this pin down here and look at the, the, I'm looking at the last pin over here and look at the edge of the chip and look how far that is. And then go look at the last pin here and the edge of the chip there. Um, generally, it looks like about the same distance on either end of the chip. You do that on both sides. So on this side over here, on the right side of what you're seeing, or it's on the left side on the video, but where my thing is, I see a lot of room up here from the last pin and I see, um, not much there. So I actually need to reorient this a little bit. So I'm going to try to push it just like that. Uh, maybe a little more. Looking better. So you see it move. Now I do the same type of check. Are we in between both legs? Um, is that space, that space good? Is that space and that space good? It looks pretty good. And the other thing I try to check is the orientation along the white line that surrounds the chip. Um, looks pretty close. It almost the, the solder's ample. The, the flux is amplifying this, but it looks like it's a little bit crooked. Let me check. So I, I have a handheld microscope that I'll look. So I'm going to stick that in. You're going to see it. That's what I'm used to using. And I can really kind of spot the line a little better. So so excuse me while I do that. I don't want to have to do this twice. 
Um, probably the microscope would work better if I could maneuver it. Uh, let's see here. Second here. I'm getting away in my video here. Can't show you both. I'm just focusing my other LCD microscope and looking at how the line goes. That line looks good on the top. The line looks pretty good on the bottom. Let me see if I move things. Looks like I moved the chip over and the, moved the circuit board over. Let me reorient that. Um, in general, this looks pretty good. So the heat I use is 450 degrees. I'm gonna turn on my hot air gun and I turn the air all the way down. And what you're gonna see is the, saw, the flux rush out and it could be with the air blowing, it's gonna push the chip off because it gets very liquefied and um, we'll just basically like water pour it off the chip. Um, so I might stop, put the air gun back, reposition the chip and come back again and try again. Um, I've had that happen. So um, the game plan is, is on my left hand, I'm in, on the bottom part of this microscope, I'm gonna run the heat. And then I'm ready with my two tweezers at the end to push down on the chip when I think everybody's hot. So here we go. I'm gonna kind of heat up generally the, the board area. You'll see the chip start floating. Yeah, it, it's literally floating. Um, so that's what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna, I mean, you kind of want that if you can get the solder to melt. So I'm just gonna kind of straighten stuff out. In theory, the solder will fix itself, but I'm not floating anymore. So hold on, I'm gonna stop and make sure I'm lined up again. There's probably a better way to do this. Maybe I don't have enough flux. Maybe I should have heated the board, but right now, if you look at this, I've got too much on this side, not enough on that side. So I need to push it back this way. Do that very gently. Nothing's really been soldered, you see. I'm gonna push down a little bit. And then let's look at our lines and our clearances here with the last pins. This is a little bit, let's see if I can focus that. On this other side, the board slanted down this way. So I need to push this side down. So it's more like closer to that. Um, it looks like it's completely running off the board and I can't do it yet. So let me um, get back over here and push it down. At some point it's gonna stay, but um, I keep fighting it. If, if I had had the guts to heat it, it might float and just put in its state, but it's getting, the amount of flux down there isn't floating it all the way and the pins are, are colliding with each other underneath the chip so all right let's have a look at that that looks pretty good again let me double check again i do a couple of takes until the amount of flux gets to be about right so let's take a look here that looks pretty centered on that side. See what I can see on this side. Sorry, I'm gonna block the view of the microscope for a sec. So if I could go down just a touch, let's go look at this a little closer. That area versus that area. Yeah, it's pretty close, but I think what I'd like to do is Bump this down just a touch. I'm going to come back up so I can see the whole chip again. Sitting right on top of there. So it looks like this moved down again here. This becomes a game. So a professional solder might say, that's exactly how you want it. You just heat it up and it'll find its way. Um, I've kind of found I've had problems with that. It just kind of drops where it is. So maybe I'm doing something wrong. And if you're a good solderer, please let me know. Again, this guy's falling down again, probably because the legs are not wanting to sit on top of each other. Just gonna kind of do that. All right, let's try yet again. I do this a couple of times if necessary. Let my hot air warm up. I'm kind of blowing it on the board, heating stuff. You'll see it. Um, the other thing I don't know if I like, looks like it's pretty even, but it looks like 
I've moved a whole chip off the side here. So let's just move it over a little bit. That looks better. Still lined up. All right. So I'm going to apply some heat, slowly work in, work in. Kind of heating up the board around it just a touch. You can see the flux starting to move and react. Okay, here it goes. I'm going to come in down on the chip. Hopefully she'll stay put. And it looks like it is. So now what I do is I'm watching the legs on the side and making sure they become molten. Some people say this should take 20 seconds. I say more like 40. I'm going to heat it up because remember the base of the chip. The base of the chip also has to um, be soldered. I'm looking for my tweezers they dropped over here. Just a second. So I've got the hot air on it, still heating it up. You can heat it up too much. Um, so you're looking for molten solder coming out of the legs that we've heated it up enough. Um, those should be molten if they're going to stick to the other guy there. So I'm just kind of going back around, circulating, just heating up that chip. Heating up everything. You'll see pretty soon um, it'll become shiny and those things will be liquid solder. So. Now it's boiling a little bit. You see it boiling. The, uh, you may not be able to see it, but the chip's moving a little bit while the flux is coming out from underneath it. You see it move a little bit around the side. Sorry, the heat gun's in the way, but that's how I have to do it here. It's getting that warm. Remember the pad, the main pads of the chip have to have to, to get soldered to the bottom too. So we're just keeping it getting warmer and warmer. Things are looking hotter. Let me try this angle a little bit. That angle a little bit. Everybody is molten. Getting warm. Lots the flux in there. I can see it starting to happen over here. Things are starting to, to turn. That's good. Good sign not all the way yet though. So I kind of wait till I can see the legs twinkling on me. Basically that they're they're melted and I know that they could be connected. Okay, it's looking better over here. Not sure about this side. These kind of look still like solid metal to me. Just keep working it. You can heat this chip up too much. They're starting to look at some molten solder here. Starting to get there. See the chip is bouncing up and down. Do you see that? Okay. I don't really like what I see on the legs on the left, but I'm assuming that we're getting warm down there. I keep working on the left-hand side, which is your right-hand side. The other side is looking pretty good. You see it sizzling, it's pretty warm. Things are molten. I'm going all around this guy. All right, so at the very end, the tricky part is you got to put tweezers down and push down on the chip so it solders to the base. And so I'm getting ready to do that. I've got the heat applied. I'm just going to push straight down. If I miss it and move it, I'm in trouble. I got to do this again. So here goes. It was already pushing down. So I'm pushing down on that. I'm going to put my heat gun away. Should start cooling off. They say you can let up after five seconds. I'm not sure. I'm going to let up and we let the guy cool down. Take a closer look here. I don't know if I like what I see. I mean, check out, here's the problems I have. And I think people run extra solder on it. I'm moving in. I'm going to look at all these legs real close. So check out that. So much solder got sucked in there, the whole leg got flattened. So where I'm looking at now is, so I can run along the chip, right there. Um, 
And notice how they do it from the factory. There's all these balls that stick out like I pushed the chip down, but um, I didn't push the chip down, but it, it's not to say it didn't, it didn't take. We've got a good line here along this edge. See, it's pretty uniform. These guys look okay. These guys look weird. These guys look like they never even really melted. These guys look like they never really melted, but the line, the lineup's okay. Everything's okay. And here's the top. Looks like we got some nice balls up here. And then down here, it kind of did its own thing. Um, these were already losing the, the top of that line. So, all right. So this chip is slowing down. I'm gonna switch cameras and show a quick check to see the effectiveness. I'm gonna shut this camera off and switch cameras. Um, let me see. Move my microscope out of the way and bring this forward. Hang on. I'm not sure where I'm at right now. My air gun's still cooling off. Sometimes I'll take another cut at this, but let me turn the video on. Where am I at? There I'm at. Okay. Let's see if I can get rid of this glare. It's daylight today. Okay, now I'm gonna focus this one moment. Have to get to the focus place. The autofocus doesn't work very good, so I think I can clean this up just a touch. There we go. All right, so. I wanna show you how I quickly test the effectiveness of my solder. And um, if you've seen me test resistances before, make sure you can see the meter. You can kind of see it off to the side. I had a middle port that was always around 2.5 and I had another port that was always 10. Those hold true even though the chip is hot. So I'm gonna actually stick this on the chip. I'm gonna go for the middle port here. And it's a little bit high. I've seen it run on 3.1, but it's higher than I want. 3.4, it looks like it's dropping maybe because of the heat. And um, that could be, and then I check the same side back out on the side over here. What is it? It seems to be very high, if not anything. So it's 5.52. So my current assessment of my soldering job is that it's no good right now. And I've had this problem with new chips, not used chips so much, but I will wait. It very well could cool down. Um, the other one is the 10. Let me see where's 10 here. This usually works because it's just standard. Seems on either side of this guy. So he's 10. What would it be this one? And he's 10. So basically it's a wait and see game now. I let this cool down. Maybe put it on the tester. Um, I make sure some of the other pins when this is cool um, don't have resistance. They should be zero resistance. If they have resistance, I've got a real problem. Um, and then I need to check these resistors again, make sure I didn't do anything when the soldering process is. So I'll, I'll check that out too. So um, that's basically my process. If I still have problems here, what I'll do is I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna reflux these. I will reheat the whole system back up and, and try to reset it. I have seen people go along with the soldering iron and add more solder to these sides before they do it. I think you can add so much solder, it'll actually short things out in there, but that's, that's how you set the chip. So it's in, I don't know if it's gonna work until I know the tester um, on that, so. Wish I knew more. If you have comments on a better way to do that, please let me know. Appreciate it. And um, thank you for watching.